Hi, it's Kim Snyder, vocal guinea pig, voice whisperer, and creator of the Voice Club Method. I wanted to make a quick video today for you, because I have a feeling this one is going to maybe hit a little close to home. I got a message recently from a singer who is really frustrated and just feels like maybe she's comparing herself too much to other people, all the talent shows on TV and whatnot, and not getting the opportunities she used to have to sing and just had some kind of bad luck with some singing stuff she submitted. And, and that happens a lot when things go wrong. What do they say? They come in threes. <laughs> For me, they come in like tens. But the reality is being a singer is really frustrating because we are surrounded by people that it looks like it's really easy for. But the other day I watched a documentary on YouTube Red. I'll put the link down in the description. And it was about a dancing violinist who had been on America's Got Talent. She got booted off the show and she was told basically that she wasn't very good and that there was no market for what she did. And to get in front of an entire international audience and be told that is like super, super painful. She got really depressed and had some major things go on in her life. And she thought, you know, maybe it's just them. I'm going to try one more time. She took her stuff to a few different labels and said, here's what I have envisioned. And they said the same thing pretty much. Can you imagine where you'd be at that point? You got turned down publicly in front of the entire world. And then you try to get back up and more people are just saying, no, listen to these people. You've got no talent. You've gotten no market for what you want to do. Just give up. I don't know about you, but I'd probably give up. But Lindsay didn't. What she did is actually go out on her own. She had all of her own ideas. She raised her own money, did the biggest show she could afford to do. And then when she made enough money, she did another show. And when they sold that one, they did another show. And then she'd hire more people and get bigger ideas. And it ended up being a worldwide tour that ended up in the theater in LA where they do, I think it's the Oscars. Now, can you imagine being on that stage, looking out, tens of thousands of people cheering you, paid for really high price tickets, and to have the satisfaction of that moment. Most of us think we're never gonna have that moment. And honestly, most of us aren't going to get to our big moment. It's not because we're not good enough, and it's not because what we do is not marketable. It's because we didn't keep going. Because that moment, that moment when you know in your heart, in your head, that I really can do what I wanted to do. I really can do this. It's fulfilling, and I'm having a blast. And I, they said I wouldn't, and I did. That feeling, that feeling doesn't have to come in front of 40,000 people. That feeling really comes when you are totally in control of your voice and you've taken the courage to get up and do again what you can find to do. It may not be the first opportunity you wanted, but it is the opportunity you find because busy singers are singers that take every opportunity. Singers that grow are singers that sing a lot. You can't sit around and say, nobody's booking me. I guess I have to give up. This, this happens um, a lot in churches. We'll say, I've been on the team forever. I was on the team forever, and now all of a sudden I'm not being called up as often, or all of a sudden nobody's putting me on the schedule and nobody's telling me why. And I've personally been on the audition boards in churches, and they make a decision and they say, okay, this year nobody over the age of. Sometimes it doesn't have to do with age, but sometimes it does. To cut somebody off, from their avenue to expressing themselves musically because they got a year older, I just think is so. Whole other issue we don't have time to get into, but for you today, the singer, it doesn't matter what kind of things you sing, it doesn't matter how good or not good you are. What people say, don't compare yourselves to others, easier said than done. You shouldn't, but, but here's the one thing you do have to compare yourself to. You have to compare yourself to the people that got back up. It's not about singing in front of 50,000 people or 100,000 people. I've sung in front of groups like that before, and it wasn't the high point of my life. It was cool. It was cool. But the reason I got those opportunities is because I sought out, really sought out opportunities, and I took any opportunity I could get to get out and sing because I just loved singing. So when it comes down to it, you have to ask yourself this. Do I love to sing? Not am I good enough for A, B, or C, or D, or do... A, B, C, and D believe in me. That is not the right question. The question is, do I love to sing? If the answer is yes, 
then invest in your voice and invest in yourself. Find an avenue to get out and sing. It may not be the one that's right in front of your face. Maybe you used to volunteer in your church a lot. Maybe you're going to do community musicals now. Maybe you're going to go do coffee houses and put a set together. Maybe you don't play an instrument, but you have a friend who plays guitar. Maybe you come up with some cover tunes and you sing at a restaurant. Make an opportunity. You'd be surprised how many singers make opportunities. You don't just wait for them to come around. You look for them actively. And when they don't exist, you make them. Uh, one year, here's an idea. One year I decided I... Um, I wanted to make some extra money for Christmas for my four children. And so I made a deal with a bookstore that sold music. And I said, I'll come in with a guitarist and I will sing Christmas carols in store. And it'll, you know, the whole week, the week before Christmas. So shop, peak shopping season. And all I want in return is gift cards. And I did that because it's easy for a store to give you gift cards. It's a lot weirder for them to figure out how to give you money. So my friend and I did that. We did a four hour set. We did Christmas music. We both got over a couple hundred dollars in uh, gift cards and we got some extra gifts out of it. And it was a great way to get our name out there. We had a really good time. I could have sat at home and said, nobody's calling me to sing for Christmas. Now I have been there. I have been in that pity party myself just as much. We are all there and we're gonna visit often. The only choice we have is not to compare ourselves to other singers. The reason you shouldn't compare yourself to other singers has nothing to do with that they might be better than you. It has to do with the fact that you don't have the exact same voice as them. In fact, what you have is a very unique voice. You don't want to waste it trying to manipulate it and copy it to be like somebody else. You have something more unique. You have something else to show people. Also, you don't know their backstory. You don't know how they've struggled. You don't know what has happened in the past. Everybody that I know that got big on American Idol and all of those, those were singers that had worked for years and years and years to establish themselves as singers. As singers. And uh, actually one of them was on an, I think it was an MTV show later. And she said she really didn't like who she became because they put her in this mold of what they were set, what they needed to sell, which is their job. And she just really didn't like herself because then it wasn't about the music. It was like, now I'm having to become someone else. But everybody came up to her in the airports and everything. But she said, as soon as I went back to being me, everybody was like, what happened to your career? Like she had somehow failed because she went back to looking like herself and singing stuff she liked. And that plays a mental trip on you too. So if you've been there or maybe you're there today, everybody has been there. The only difference between the ones that quit and go off into the darkness, which is probably 80%, and the other 20% are those that say, I wanna sing, I'm gonna do it. And if there's not an opportunity here, that's fine. I'll find a new opportunity. Do I need to get better at A, B, C, whatever those things are? Sure. I don't even know a professional singer who doesn't have things that they're working on improving. That is a given. If you're a singer, you're working on improving something, right? But the first thing you need to do is get yourself out there and sing. The more you sing, the more things you'll find out that you don't like in your voice. That is really beneficial information if you know where to go to get the answers. The problem with that is a lot of people go places where they basically don't have answers and then they go with the other 80%. But I want to encourage you today, you have been given a voice. And if you love to sing, those two things are all you need. Now you just have to go make it happen. When a door closes, you find something else. When you don't find any opportunities, uh, there's no open mic anywhere, there's no friends of yours. Oh, one year, all my musician friends moved out of state, and I'm like, I don't know anybody here anymore. Then you figure out something else to do. I decided one year I was going to do an album, and I didn't have any music. This is after my musician friends all moved. I didn't know how I was going to make it happen. I play instruments. So I learned to play around with loops, and I put together these three songs I wrote, and I was just going to, I thought, forget it. You know what? Nothing else is going on. I'm going to make this little EP, which is just a mini album. And I'll mix it myself at home. And it's just, I'm going to write three songs. My family will probably even appreciate it, but I'm going to do it because I'm a singer and a singer sings. And I can't find a way to do what I want to do. So I'm going to find a way to figure out anything I can do. And that's really all I could come up with. Well, the weird thing is that it turned out um, there was actually a jingle studio that I did some work at every once in a while. And I hated the vocals. I hated them really, really bad when I was mixing them. And so I asked the producer at the studio, I said, can I can I trade out my next job with you just to have you remix the vocals on this one song? Cause I just, it's, I'm just not that great at 
mixing my own vocals. So I said, sure, you know, that's good for him. It's a free vocal for him in the studio. So he, he I brought my project in, which is basically all loops to a song I wrote around loops. And then I played it for him. And then he said, do you, do you have any more? And I said, well, I've got two. I've got two more, but I can only trade out X amount of dollars. So if you can just do the vocals on this one. He said, no, because we've we've been starting a label on the side and we'd like to sign you, but you've got to write 11 songs. I would have never had that opportunity. I would have never, ever had that opportunity had I not been so frustrated as a singer because I couldn't find any opportunity to sing anywhere. All my musician friends left. I don't know how to play an instrument. These are things that most people just quit, but I'm just obstinate. And that's what's gotten me by. Maybe you're not obstinate, but it's time to be. There is an opportunity to sing. You find it. If you can't find it, you make it. If you're not great, guess what? We're all working on something. If you need to find out how to get better, thevoiceclubacademy.com. If you want encouragement, thevoiceclub.com. We are all here to help singers like you because you're just singers like us. We're all just people who love to sing. So do it. Believe in yourself. Find a way. It doesn't matter what it is. Just get out there and sing. Would you take a minute and subscribe? It really, really makes a difference, and I appreciate it. Real quick, I wanted to let you know that in 2020, I'm planning uh, some free training webinars just for you. It's going to be for beginning singers and all the way to gigging singers and um, those who want to be or are involved in choirs all the way to worship leaders. Everything in between. We're going to cover it in 2020. I'm working on that. But because of the software limitations, I'm only going to have a very few number of people in each of these webinars. So if you'd like to get a heads up, if you'd like to cut to the front of the line and know when the dates are set, all you have to do is go to thevoiceclub.com slash waitlist, all one word, waitlist. That will get you on the list. You will be the first to know when we establish dates for those free training webinars and I have something very special I've been working on for you. When you join the waitlist at thevoiceclub.com slash waitlist, you're going to get to download a 21-page ebook I wrote for you on the mix. It's not what you think, I promise. It's called The Mega Mix Meltdown, Why the Mix is Not the Fix. Curious? I hope so. You wouldn't believe how confusing we make this vocal education stuff. My mission is to simplify it for you. And I'm going to do that with Mix in that free ebook that you can download when you join our webinar waitlist for 2020. Again, it's thevoiceclub.com slash waitlist. Get on it. Even if you never listened to anything from The Voice Club before, I really hope you get the feeling that I'm just here to help. I am a singer. I found out things a lot of teachers don't ever look for because they want to teach. I studied as a high-level vocal coach purely for selfish reasons, only because nobody would give me access to the information I needed as a singer to really master my voice. And you shouldn't have to do that. My goal is to make sure that all of the vocal education confusion, and it's not you, you're not stupid, it's not your voice, it's not that you're not good enough, the stuff is flipping unexplainable most of the time. I figured it out, and I serve you with that information. I hope you get that. I've got something else I'd really like to serve you with, and that is in 2020. I've been working on um, some really great free training webinars. If you are a wannabe singer, a regular singer, a gigging singer, a professional singer, we got stuff for you. If you are wanting to join a choir, are part of a massive choir, you want to be on worship team but never have, or you're a worship leader professionally, we've got stuff for you too. It's all coming in 2020, but because of the software limitations, we can only have a certain small group in each webinar. So here's what I want to give you the chance to do. Um, you know how you can't cut to the front of the line at concerts? who you can hear. I'd like to give you that chance to cut to the front of the line. Be the first person to know when we set the dates so you have the first opportunity to sign up. All you have to do is go to thevoiceclub.com slash waitlist, all one word. When you do, you're going to be able to download this ebook I wrote called The Mega Mix Meltdown. Why the mix is not the fix. It is way more confusing than you think. That's why we all think we just can't get it or we don't have time to figure it out. Maybe we're not smart enough. Our voice isn't good enough. It's not that. The stuff is flipping confusing. There are four different definitions. They do totally different things for your voice. Did you know that? No. 
because I'm a vocal guinea pig and it's my job to do it for you. So I wrote all that stuff down in the Mega Mix Meltdown ebook, uh, the Why the Mix is Not the Fix, and that is your free gift from me to you when you sign up at thevoiceclub.com slash waitlist. You're signing up to be notified when our free training starts in 2020 with all those topics. So you get, you know, hey, give me my ticket first. Everybody else wait. I'll let you do it. I have made something just for you that I want you to know about. If you think you know what the mix is, the middle, the middle voice, all those different things, I promise you, 98% chance you're wrong. Why? Because they make it so much more confusing than you think. And I've spent years studying all the different methods and what they're supposed to do in your voice. I've written a 21-page ebook called The Mega Mix Meltdown, Why the Mix is Not the Fix. I hope you're curious. I'm going to tell you how to get it free at the end. All right, I told you I was going to give you a chance to get the free ebook about why the mix is not the fix. It's called the Mega Mix Meltdown, and I put it together for you as another free training resource. And here's how you get it absolutely free. We're going to do yet more free training on webinars in 2020 on just a multitude of topics. And because we're not going to be able to have a whole bunch of people in each webinar, I want to give you the chance to be among the first to find out when we post the date so you can decide if you want to attend. All you have to do is go to thevoiceclub.com slash waitlist. One word, waitlist. When you go to thevoiceclub.com slash waitlist, and you sign up to be notified of those dates and those topics, then you're going to confirm your email and you'll automatically be able to download that ebook and find out why the mix, quote unquote, is not the fix. I think you want to know this one. Again, thevoiceclub.com slash waitlist. Have you ever tried to understand like certain singing topics or words that you hear and definitions and kind of just given up? If you did, it's not that you're not smart enough to figure it out. It's not that your voice isn't good enough. It isn't any of that. I have studied every major singing approach and wasted tens of thousands of dollars doing it. So my mission is really to take what I've learned, you know, the whole simple white chick method that I did purely selfishly for myself as a professional singer because girl needed to figure it out and didn't matter if I was stupid, still needed to figure it out. So I spent a lot of money other people wouldn't justify. And what I found out at the end of that would blow your mind. I'm going to give you a little piece of that in an ebook I wrote for you called The Mega Mix Meltdown, Why the Mix is Not the Fix. And at the end, I'll tell you how to get it free. So have you got mix? Have you mastered it? Did you know that there are four completely different definitions for what mix is? And that every single one of them has a different goal in mind and a different way to measure it or not be able to? I drilled it all down the simple white chick way and I'm gonna give it to you free as a gift when you sign up on our webinar waitlist for 2020. This is to let you know when we drop the dates and topics for our 2020 free webinar training. We're gonna do topics for basic singers to advanced singers from beginning church singers to worship leaders. We're gonna cover it all in 2020, but we can just let a small group in. But I do wanna give you the chance to skip to the head of the line and be first to know when the dates are posted so you can decide if you wanna attend. And you do that by going to thevoiceclub.com slash wait list. One word, wait list. Thevoiceclub.com slash wait list. When you do, you'll confirm your email and then I'm going to send you an email with that download link so that you can get the mega mix meltdown. Why the mix is not the fix. We want to be educated singers, but they make it so hard. That's free for you at thevoiceclub.com slash wait list. Can't wait to see you there. Let me know what you think of the book.